Hey people, I'm going to be telling you about binary <laughs> He's starting well. Binary stars now. Uh, this particular slide on this PowerPoint is not mine, okay? It's from Boardworks, as you can see. All right, so uh, binary stars. So sometimes you can look in a telescope and you can see a point of light, okay? Uh, now, if your telescope is doesn't have enough resolving power, it may show one point of light where in reality you have two stars, so two points of light, okay? Go on my playlist on telescopes. I have a video about resolving power, so it has to do with the light that you're taking in and the diameter of the aperture, so the part that the light enters from, okay? So if I have a more powerful telescope, then I can resolve the binary stars, meaning I can see that it's not just one big point of light, but it's actually two different stars, okay? And binary stars, the way that they behave is like you can see now in the animation. So they go around each other uh, and they go around their own center of mass. So uh, depending on the mass of each of the stars, they're going to have a center of mass and they are going to go around that center of mass. So in this diagram in here, if I play this part again, can I do this? If I play this again, you will see that they are going more or less around the center, okay? This is because in this particular animation, they seem to be ma stars with equal masses, but uh, this works with any stars, okay? So they don't have to have equal masses. It's just that the position of the center of mass may change. Now, in terms of the spectra, the, the star spectra, um, as you know, and do go on my video about star spectra as well, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you know that the stars will have emission and absorption lines. And in here, I have the spectra of the stars, and they are picking um, two particular absorption lines for each of the stars. And because the star is going to move away from us and later on move, um, sorry, towards us and later on move aw away from us, I'm going to have a shift in their wavelength, okay? So the star spectra is going to show that the lines are actually going to shift, okay? So keep moving around. So as the star moves towards us, I get the uh, blue shift. So the lines shift towards the blue part of the spectra. And as the, light, uh, the star moves away from us, I have red shift. So it moves towards the red part of the spectrum, okay? And this is a way that I can actually use this as well to find extrasolar planets, but I will leave this for when I give you a lesson on extrasolar planets. But this is a way where you know that a star is wobbling around and then you can figure out why the star is wobbling around. If it's two stars, you will very easily spot them, okay? The same way I can see an eclipsing binary star system if the system is in our line of sight. So as this diagram shows, I have two, uh, two, sorry, two stars, a red and a blue one, and the brightness in the beginning, when the two of them are next to each other, is at its maximum, okay? Then I have uh, a, a first dim, which is I have the red star going in front of the blue star. So I have the dim, and the dim is going to give me an idea about the radius of the star, okay? So as the star goes in front of the blue star, now some of the light from the blue star does not get to us. So there is a dim in the brightness, okay? The star leaves, and then I have the stars again, blue and red, both showing um, towards us or both shining on us. So I have the maximum part again. Then it's the turn for the blue star to go in front of the red. So now I have another dim, okay? Now, the red is not as bright, so the dim is not as big, but I do have a decrease in brightness. And then again, once the blue uh, star moves away from the red star, you're going to see that the brightness comes back to its initial value, okay? So, if the system is on in our line of sight, one star is going to pass in front of the other, and an eclipse is going to be seen. Again, this is a way uh, that you can also find extrasolar planets. This is the transit method. And if I'm not wrong, that's the method. It is, yeah, that's the method that they found this uh, TRAPPIST system. So they do have the Kepler telescope that is quite finding uh, lots of um, planets, okay, around stars. Now, I'll show you this video here. This video is showing how the brightness um, 
a more a realistic graph really about the dip of the um, the brightness graph shows as the star moves around okay so it's a, a representation of this in case you would not understand my diagram okay so here we go i'll show you the i'll put the link on the video no i'll put the link the video on the link no i'll put the link on the video yeah on the description okay uh, this is just another example in case you don't quite know um what to do in terms of you know how the dip should be and all these things just allocate a certain brightness to each of the stars and then if one star is uh, partially um, covered then some of the brightness will disappear but uh, the other star will have full brightness when the two stars show up they have full brightness and if one of the stars comp com uh, disappears completely because it's smaller and is being eclipsed then that deep needs to be the same height as the brightness of that star so the contribution that that star would have for the uh, the brightness star um, uh, graph okay so this is just another way of you doing and then just to finalize i'm going to give you an exercise so this is a graph a real graph that shows the shift in the wavelength of a particular spectral line of one of the binary stars and pause the video figure out what the orbital period is and use the graph in the doppler equation to calculate the maximum recessional velocity of the star meaning the maximum speed that the star is moving away from us so I'm going to go on the answer, so pause the video, try to do them. But for the orbital period, all that I need to do is see when I have a complete shift of the wavelength and then going back to the original position. So eight days is when I have a complete wave, okay? So that's the orbital period. Now for the velocity, I need to use the Doppler's formula. So delta lambda over lambda equals v over c and i can have a minus sign to remind myself that the star is moving away from us when i have redshift so the delta lambda oh so v is going to be the speed of light so c times delta lambda over lambda so lambda is the wavelength when i don't have any shift so if you look here in the graph sorry if you look here on the graph that's my lambda zero so my wavelength when i have no shift okay so that is uh six five six point twenty eight okay so that goes here in the formula and my delta lambda is going to be the difference between this and the peak of my wavelength so the peak of the shift okay so this is about five six hundred and fifty six point thirty five so i do six hundred point uh, six hundred and fifty six point thirty five minus six hundred and fifty six point twenty eight the 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 wavelength with no change uh, all times the speed of light three times ten to the power of eight and all divided by six points five six times ten oh sorry point twenty eight which is the wavelength without any change of the without any shift okay and that's how you figure it out so that's all about binary stars i'm still going to tell you about quasars and galaxies but that's going to be in another video okay so i'll see you just in a little bit and take care oopsie how do i do this okay here we go bye take care